So good evening, everyone. Um, I uh, first of all want to thank uh, Lanka Nature Conservationist as well as Telecom for inviting me to uh, deliver this uh, public lecture on mangroves. Um, Maybe to start with, I would kindly request uh, the audience to keep their um, microphones in mute so that um, there will be no disturbance. Thank you very much. Um, but you are mostly wel most welcome to ask me any question at any moment as we go ahead. Um, and I really want to turn this into a discussion rather than me just talking. That's quite important. And I do understand that we have audience joining from other countries as well as um, I know there's uh, staff of uh, Sri Lanka Telecom joining here. I'm particularly happy to he see that, hear that, that they are joining. And uh, for the benefit of everyone, I would try and make sure that I, I do this bilingually so that um, when it comes to technical terms, of course, I would uh, go ahead and describe them in English, but also I, I really want to make sure that this lecture is understood by everyone because mangroves are everyone's and it's important that this knowledge, uh, there can't be knowledge, uh, get, uh, limitations to knowledge because of language barriers. So with that, let's start. So uh, when Samantha gave me a call and asked me whether I would be able to do this lecture, I really wanted to deviate from the typical lectures I normally do. Uh, because most lectures, some of you have already listened to these lectures I've done in the past regarding mangroves, are very much focused on restoration because I'm very passionate about mangrove restoration. But I deliberately removed everything about restoration from the slides today, basically because I want to focus on some other thing. Because uh, most of the time, one question that is being asked from me is uh, why bother? Why why do we need it? So I, I myself started thinking, what if mangroves are not there? What, what the world would be like? Will, will we feel a big loss? So with that in my mindset, I thought that I would go ahead and talk about mangroves. And it's at a very right time. Last month, we celebrated Pearl Mangrove Day. And um, mangroves are in the... Um, uh, sort of table of every forum and uh, every alternative day you tend to hear something being said about mangroves in newspapers so they are being discussed about so let's actually tease apart and see what if mangroves are not there kadolana neti parisarya gana katha karaddi isselama api terun gandone kadolana kiyanne mokakda kiyanne ekka mokada den kadolana gana api goda katha karunwa they are very beautiful landscapes to start with. Really interesting, very, uh, uh, very intriguing to be frank uh, because they change from morning to evening. You would see different things happening in an in an ecosystem like mangroves because of the changes to the tide, tide level comes up and down and accordingly the whole system changes. So if you happen to sit throughout the day in a mangrove forest, this little log that you see now will eventually disappear. And then with the low tide, the system will come back and you might see the same picture again. And if you look at the dynamic environment, uh, may Parasar Padatia Venas, you know, Mammy got the Chaya Rupe Badia Velaviga, Tata, Vadadia Velavi, the Memu Parasarim, Vahilayana, Avastava, Tinito Dek, Metentin Satu, Satu Satu Prajava, Eanu Parasare, Vena Venas, come Harima, Venas. To me, maybe the Hatter Udam Valin Udam make a jiva twin the Hadunu Parasar Padati, Loki, Hariadri. At the Matinikai, Tamai. Kadulan, Udam make a jiva, then a mood that a lang when the smooth Trunavake Parasar Padati butter, Lavana Hell, Vage Devata, Pasata Venati butter, Kadulana Tamai, Mim Udam make a Gatakarna Jivite, Vadima Gatakaran. Now I showed you here what a, uh, what a undisturbed 
pristine mangrove forest would look like. But at the same time, the today's talk is about what if mangroves are not there. So I'm showing you what it is like if when the mangroves are re, uh, removed by us. The, this photo, uh, by the way, I need to tell you all the photos that you, I'm showing you here comes from different parts of our country. Um, so what you see here is up, up in the north, um, um, uh, where I am showing you uh, what has happened when we have gone ahead and deliberately removed all the mangroves. Now, in this case, in order to come up with saltans. So uh, even after 10 years of abandoning the saltan, it is still a very much a barren land. So even before I start, what I really want to tell you is working when we work with mangroves, what we do understand is destroying a mangrove ecosystem is pretty easy. But once you destroy it, once you take it away from its tipping point, once it passes the tipping point, bringing it back to the normal situation is a really, really difficult situation. And it's evident here, as you can see, even after so many years, further away, you can see in this picture mangroves. Yet even, even when there's mangroves further away, even though they are fruiting, or even though their seeds being washed off with the tides, you can see still mangroves are struggling. All those salt and uh, salt resistant plants like salt marsh plants here that you can see a few species like um, Sueda heliconia, but yet mangroves are still very much absent. When you make a tamai, Kadulana Parisarek, he got a Vedagma de Apitirungando, and they may out of the high to pass set up a rather tip but a Kadulana, Tavama may Parisare Tavila may Hadila, Pome Paranatiba Parisare, Tivila. Make a tena tower, a bit of a cuprashnea, Cadolane Ganadanagat, but Cadolana Nati Parisare Muk the Kenneka, Mama Penala Tamai Mangitwe, Patanganica Hundai Kela. Right. Then I think it's important to get into some of the technicalities because when we use the word mangroves, there's always a bit of a confusion because some talk about the word mangrove. Some talk about mangrove ecosystem, and then some use the word mangrove. These are all interchangeable words. Uh, collectively, the mangrove ecosystem talks about the biotic and the abiotic environment associated with mangroves. So here we are talking about plants, we are talking about the animals, and also the soil and other uh, abiotic uh, components like water. So that itself is the mangrove ecosystem. Mangroves are uh, given that name itself because of a unique set of plants. And they themselves are known as mangroves. The forest that is created by mangroves are sometimes referred as mangroves. So those are the differences in these words. But what are mangroves? Now, it's interesting because when you look at the plant kingdom, especially the flowering plants, their distribution has a limit. And that limit comes when they reach the coastline. Because beyond coastline, when the moment we enter to the continental shelf and to the ocean, it is the lower kingdom plants, algae, mostly green, brown, and red algae that we tend to see. Two groups of flowering plants, dicotyledonous flowering plants, have managed to conquer the sea land interface. Now that includes mangroves. So if someone asks me, what are mangroves? They are the flowering plants that you find in the interface between the ocean and the land. Now, the moment I say so, you have to always remember in all of us, if you stand in front of the ocean for five, six minutes, you know how you are battered by the wind, how you are battered by the, uh, uh, the, the ocean currents, the waves, so on and so forth. It's a very unstable environment. So despite being flowering plants, this, they have managed to 
stand there, established there, thanks to certain unique characters that they have developed in order to be uh, winners of this ecosystem. Ameka tamai kame kadalan parisare tiena shakavali tiena vadagam de sapushpa shakavali mudu thruna saha kadalan pamanai hekia vala bagana tiena muda saha godabi matra tiena me podi margin eke jivat vendam. Eke jivat vene kudesi vedak nemi e vidi her jivat vendu when a kananuat and a guda e anu kadalana hadagana tieno. If a thumb up in them with an opulent miniature, I wrote in under the pain of Yaka to the young water and tea and kill up again a topic again. Katakarum. They are flowering plants. So, an array of colors, a different, different ways of pollination, fragrance, colors, uh, all this is being used by the mangroves in order to pollinate and to disperse and in order to fruit tend to increase their population. That's, that's, that's another very interesting thing. This, this, is a very in, uh, this is a very colorful environment, especially during the flowering season. It itself is a very colorful environment. Now, the other important thing that we need to remember is, as I mentioned earlier, that mangroves survive along sea land interface. And in, this is where you have high fluctuations of salinity, high lo water levels of uh, saline water, water full of uh, salt comes in. Then you have the tides, high, uh, lower tides and high tides, spring tides and the neap tides, and of course the winds. Don't also forget that in addition to the sea water, most mangroves tend to occupy where the river mouths meet the sea. So estuarine areas are also ideal mangrove areas. And that, having said that, then, then what is important is mangroves have to equally be adapted to live with the freshwater influxes. Every, every flood will bring high influxes of freshwater and mangroves should be comfortable to survive even under those conditions. Every river, as it comes to the river mouth, is also bringing loads of sediment from the mountain to the river, uh, to the ocean. These sediments are ultimately re received by environments where mangroves are present. So you are talking about an environment where there's plenty of water, but not ideal water for plants to survive. This, this is saline water. There is soil, but not the soil that you want to be. You are talking about a shaky environment. Sediments are not the ideal place for a plant to survive. So how do you win a situation like that? And in addition to that, there's also the other problem. This environment, if you look at the soil profile, very easily you can see the two color changes where the air enters and where the air is absent. So we talk about the aerobic uh, soil layer and the anaerobic soil layer. Anaerobic means absence of air. Now plants need air. They need a lot of air. So while leaves can take air because they are above ground, then the roots are going to go ahead, with, going to uh, come up with lots of problems because the roots are also in Roots also require a lot of air in order to respire and all to do the normal physiological functions. In, in a situation like that, these plants have come up with so many adaptations to tackle each and every problem that I've been talking about. Soil, uh, absence of air in the soil, um, high salinity, extreme temperatures, uh, so on and so forth. So they, this is what mangrove ecosystem is, right? Kadalana ke na katha kara di gudar vila vut lanka be api dakin ne gudak vila vut Ganga moye katwal lek katwech kadalana nisa gudar dini dani ne hai lanka be kadalana muda ekkam sambandh vila badh vila theeno akela. Vishesh mo turate adi 
අපි පුත්‍රලමේ නියලට යද්දී ලංකාවේ පෝස්ට් ලයින් එක දිගටම කඩලාන තියෙනවා. ඒක හරි විශේෂී දෙයක්. එතකොට මේ කඩලාන වලට අනිත් කඩලාන වලට වැඩිය වෙනස් කතාවක් තියෙනවා. ඒ කියන්නේ උදම් රැල වලට විතරක් නෙමෙයි මුහු දෙන්න එන රැල පහරවල් වලට ඔරුතු දෙන විදිහට ජීවත් වෙන්න ඕනේ. ඉතින් ඒකට උදව්වක් හැටියට තමයි අපි දකින්නේ මේ නොයෙක් කාකාරයේ මුල් වර්ග. धनिसाग ඒ අවස්ථාව අරගෙන තියෙන්නේ ඒකම තමයි අපි මෙතන දකින්නේ අපි නියෝමැටික් ෆෝස් එහෙම නැත්නම් පෙන්සිල් රූට්ස් කියලා කියනවා මේ දකින්නේ තේ දෙයම තමයි කොච්චර මුල් ගොඩක් ආපහු උඩට ඇවිල්ලා තියෙනවද ලෝකයේ ශාක වලින් පල්ලෙහාට යන දු ඉහළට එන මුල් බලන් ඕන පරිසරයක් ඇති යන දොන්න අපිට යන දෙන්නේ කඩලාන වලට අනිත් පැත්තෙන් දැන් මෙතන අපිට පේනවා කොයි ආකාරයටද රිබන් රූට්ස් ඇති වෙලා තියෙන්නේ කියලා ඒ අර මං ඉස්සෙල්ලා කියපු රොන් මඩත් එක්ක ජීවත් වෙද්දී ගහ වැටෙන් නැතුව පෙරලෙන් නැතුව තියා ගන්න තියෙන අනුවර්තන so likewise there's lots of adaptations that have enabled these mangroves to stay in this and in this environment salt is another very important thing how do you tackle salt because these plants though they grow in high saline environments they need fresh water so the moment the plant takes water along with comes the salt so you need to have mechanisms to get rid of salt in order to save fresh water so while showing very xerophytic conditions or rather uh, just like as if they are living in arid zones like very much like cacti they also have special adaptations to get rid of salt now as you can see here in um, abyssinia marina what we call uh, mand if you go on a, a very sunny day during day time what are you seeing is salt salt excreted by the plant itself so that's one way of getting rid of salt and here the other plant i'm showing telecheria exocheria agloca is a unique plant why i tend to say that this plant is very much like a plant that you see in temperate countries during autumn uh, with really pretty colored leaves red to orange to yellow why are these flower uh, leaves uh, having these colors basically because that's an adaptation to remove salt plant takes the salt in excess salt is uh, stored in the leaves that's why they have got these vivid colors and when the salt load is um, sufficient plant would just release the leaf get rid of the salt minna me wage ek ek aakare anuvartana thiyena ek hinda me kadalana parisara paddhatiyeka thiyena vichitratwe hari anunai eka kiyala nima karanna ba um then like every other plant the survival depends on how you disperse your propagules so in the case of mangroves again there is a problem because when your propagule is or the seed is falling into water there is no guarantee whether it will end up in the sea ideally you don't want uh, any plant does not want the propagule to end up in the sea so in order to make sure that every seed that is produced has a chance to survive they have also got lots of adaptations like in the case of kerala what you see in here uh it is well adapted to float so that it will float until it finds a suitable environment and would uh, germinate and over here as you can see these are very interesting phenomena why we say mangroves show vivipari or rather uh, if i am to explain it the fruit itself germinates in the sea, uh, tree itself then api samanen dakinne atayak vetila polowata vetunain passe eka palawenne namuth metana divenne gahe tiyeddima palaya at at gediya palawenawa 
शाकाहारी अड प्लास्टिटी Showing different growth forms. Now, what you see here is a classic example of that. Uh, in Singhala, we call this manda. Manda kya na gaha tamai me dak dak palati ne ekkama gaha avastha dekha kati ne. Aiy, the me me gaha me na me thara umse na gaha manda kya na gaha me ul manda kya ne ka avise ne amari na kya ne ka hari thana ka hai dunha ma loko loko gaha kya ne ka me thar gaana kuse ne ka. E vage hi ma. मुखदी sunlight valley ek hinda me wage parisara paddati ekadi api kenawa manda gaha stunt vela dwarf form ekakata yanawa kiyala e gahatama puluwan kama tiyena wena watur fresh water wedi pura labena tanakadi me wage ihelata gihila hadenna menna me wage ekkama visheshe loku plasticity ekak apita dakinda hamba wenawa then the other important thing is uh, some, sometimes people have asked me when we talk about mangroves why do you want to go to coastline only can't you plant mangroves elsewhere isn't that possible now let me answer to that question no it is not possible why is it not possible because when we talk about mangroves we talk about two things we talk about true mangroves and mangrove associates what are true mangroves true mangroves are the mangroves plants that are highly adapted only to survive in this environment they cannot grow anywhere else they cannot survive under any other condition so if they don't find the ideal physiologic uh, ideal uh, water quality parameters and the soil parameters they will not survive so that's exactly why we cannot grow mangroves anywhere else they have to grow where they ought to be so when it comes to true mangrove species Sri Lanka is blessed with 21 species. That's almost one third of the global true mangrove diversity. So, being a small island, we have to be very proud about it that we have that many uh, true mangrove species in this country. But in addition to that, these are also uh, sort of distributed very uniquely in the country. Not that all these 21 are found everywhere in the country. For an example, if I look at Over here, you see Luminicera littoria, what we call Ratamilla. Now, this one is found only one location in the country in Madugangar. When a Lanka with Kisima Tanaka me gada kindane Ratamilla ke ne ratu paata malapi pe ne me ka satte kadula ne ke Lanka with da kindane pe ne Madugangar podi tan ke tanaka mitra. Lanka with ne kohi baat ne lo ke ani tan wale hitiya ki bade Lanka with ek me ke tanai tiye ne. आईट पास से आप इमेज मैप देती हैं ना एक बात तो थी हम सीरियोप्स देखें ड्रॉ किए ना क्या एक साथ देखा दिलाने आप मैं क्या दक्षिण दापी त्रिकुणा माले किन्हीं आप ऐसे दिया दोने आप इतने ऐसे दिए ना आप इतने अनित वेन कोई बात लंका भी दक्षिण द हम देने मामे माला के क्या दालती है मित्र दालती है skifora hydrophilacea එහෙම නැත්නම් black mangrove කියනවා එහෙම නැත්නම් කළු කඩොල් කියලා කියනවා බොහොම තා මේ අඩු විරල ශාකයක් මේක දකින්න අපිට 
uh, so the take home message is that although there are 21 mangrove plant species in the country, not that they are equally distributed, they are distributed in different parts of the country. So no two mangrove patches are similar, right? What else do I need to tell you about mangroves before we talk about whether we can live without mangroves is that the vegetation composition and the structure of mangroves differ remarkably. From place to place, they are different. And it's important when we ta start talking about mangroves to know these changes also. Okay. So uh, uh, for most of us, seen a mangrove ecosystem, which is it's in its prime condition, is very rare. This is Vidak Palatip, one of the most important mangrove ecosystems in the country. To give you an idea about the composition of the plants and how they are structured, you can see the species that are with the water are having very special adaptations not to fall with all the still roots, prop roots, and so on and so forth. You go further inland, it's different. And still, Sri Lanka has some remarkably good mangroves that really rival with the tropical forests. Here in Gangewadia, this picture was taken in Gangewadia to give you an idea about the composition of the species. And here you see several different species from Rhizobora to um, uh, Brugira to a um, few other species here, but then mangroves are also unique because sometimes under certain specific soil conditions and water conditions, they once certain species tend to dominate. So you see only that one, nothing else, as if someone has gone and cultivated. Now under normal conditions in other natural forests, it's very, very rare. Monocultures, are very rare under uh, other, in other forests. So here, for here's, here is an example. You can see just one species. Ekameka species of dominate when ek of bitter my duck in Hambin, me Ulmanda Kenik, Avicina Marina Keneka, egg her bitter my, when she a shark and egg the maker, itamatmus suisha she cut there, Kadulana take a big katakrati. Sometimes it's difficult to find mangroves because they are well hidden because of their, as I told earlier, the anatomical plasticity, um, sorry, morphological plasticity. So what you see, if, uh, if, you are, your, if your eyes are not trained, what you are seeing is a salt marsh. Yes, it is a salt marsh. That's uh, Yamakare Eka eka kadulana parisare venas. Lankave api hambantu in the Yapanete adi, hambina kadulana parisara padati, pet kalaped, viedi kalaped, atra medicalaped, me kalapul in coca the kene canoat venas veno. Ganga pen jale labino the nad the kene katano venas veno. Ekanisa Lankave kadulana gana katakra di. Kadalana Parasara Padati again, Kuma the Visser Kranikinika Kaurari Hawood, Minimis Siruma Visser, Padilatrinum, Kade, Tanakatanak, Venus Nisa. Right. So that's such a wonderful place. But their distribution is globally and nationally at a very bad level. This photo I took on my way to celebrate uh, mangrove. 
uh, International Mangrove Day on 26th of last month. We were on our way to Eastern Coast. And this is what I came across. Someone has taken a contract to come up with a bridge. Bridge is yet to come. Maybe in another one or two years time, the bridge would come. But the very first thing the person has done is relentlessly going and cutting off all the mangroves in that area. I couldn't understand why, but that's what it is. And this is exactly how we tend to treat our mangrove ecosystem in most places. But the, sadly, that's not what it should be because mangroves are not found everywhere in the world. Sri Lanka should be particularly proud because if you look at here in this map, you can see that their distribution is restricted to the tropical and subtropical areas. And in addition to that, if you also look at the numbers, these different colors represent the numbers. So uh, over here, if the color is red, that is higher number of true mangrove species. So you can see we are in Southeast Asia over here. We are talking about the highest diversity. Although mangroves are found in the rest of the world, but the diversity is not as high as what we see in the Indian Ocean. So the mangrove diversity in Indian Ocean is very, very important. What else do I need to share with you? If you look at the global total of mangrove uh, uh, cover at the moment, as per the Global uh, Forest Cover Watch and also the Mangrove Watch, this is the amount that we have at the moment. And of that, you can also see Southeast Asia is so important. Southeast Asia is important because of its mangrove cover. And it's home to not just a rich diversity, but also to a higher percentage of mangrove, global mangrove cover. So we have a moral responsibility to take care of our mangroves. So again, I'm asking then, what if we don't have mangroves? Okay, what will be our, uh, what will it be like? Globally, if you look at, you can see a few countries are quite important when we are talking about the mangrove cover. Indonesia in particular, you can see because of its high percent if, from the global mangrove cover, 22% of the global mangrove cover is found in uh, Indonesia, Australia, Nigeria, Brazil are very, very important countries. The country nearest to us, Bangladesh, is also important because of Sundarabans. Indonesia, Brazil, Nigeria. Global mangrove This is a very important map when we talk about mangroves. Why? Because this shows the loss or the gain in the last few, uh, like within the last decades. So you can see the message is mixed. The red colors here are talking about loss. Wherever mangroves have been lost, you can see from yellow to red color. Gray is where the changes have not happened. And these are the countries where mangroves are increasing. Their extent is increasing. While we see few green colors, What's the story? Globally, we are losing mangroves. And that is the sad story. And you can also see certain parts of the world which shows the red color that is 100% lost. I mean, even if we are in the world, so here's some statistics for you to know, uh, because I know that there are students listening. That's why I wanted to indicate these statistics, I'm not going to dwell in it. But remember, since 2000, we have lost over 60% uh, 60 of the mangroves. And 
Why are we loose in mangroves? Multiple reasons. Erosion, sea level rise, hurricanes, droughts, climate change, and anthropogenic activities. Here in Southeast Asia, among the anthropogenic activities, salt, uh, saltans, and aquaculture, whether it is for fish, crabs, or shrimp, aquaculture is, has been the, the most important reason for loosening mangroves due to human activities. So I just want to tell that. But it's not just that, but other things are uh, also responsible and sea level rise is certainly going to play a role in near future. The Himakata Kadla, Apiloki again a balala, Lankava Tim. Lankava tapon, then quay the Kadala and a tin, Nikin Kisilam Balandune. They make the weather that Madita, my men the maid, and Milanka, we Kadalana tea, the Mapika Kadamama, Kadalana tick a balander, a bit of podi may handle in Sikapone. Eight tarang, a duk pramane katamai, a pilanka with and the Kadalana via Pilati, mink cola part of all dikin, pinani Lanka, we Kadalana tea and a tantikatamai. Hinang, Api Kadalana Gana Minguda, Kataka Namimo, the Apitatian Palavinima de Terunganda, Api Kadalana Gana Kataka at Lankawe, Apita Itama, Adu Pramane Kadalana Tiene, Eva Game, E Adu Pramane in the Tamai, up in the Ganatamai, Tawamat, me Kadalana, Vala, that is Akama Kana Kataka name. Uh, and with the latest um, uh, estimations, we are talking about around 19,000 hectares of mangroves in the country. But don't forget, historically, we had been talking about extents over 25,000 hectares or even 30,000 hectares. And we, uh, we have lost substantial amount of mangroves in the last 20, 30 years. And I'm not going to go into details why we lost it. As I mentioned, Southeast Asia lost most of its mangrove cover because of shrimp farming. And here in Sri Lanka, it is the same reason. In addition to the urbanization, people occupying the lagoonal and the shoreline areas, we lost substantial amounts of mangroves due to shrimp farming, especially after the 1980s, that's the reason, and it continues be, to be the biggest challenge for mangrove conservation at the moment in the country. Right. Emana, when the main shooty tika bear a ganda da pi mechra dangalani, make gana mechra katakarani, main tika bear a ganda. I make gana pi mechra miarini. The forest department of Ikavagi Ayatan and million gana, we are dang karela, I may wage vetaval gahagana. Kadulana Rakin de Arni. The das the Haname Indala, the das with seven and come million Panaha, Bandagar in Vinkara, Lanka, the Kadulana Pratistapan. A Yapime de Valkran. Kadulana Natur, a pita, bury the Chivat men. Ekanapi Katavime Katini. Right. So A Yapita Berikin and Ekagana Katakranda, Mang Kadulana Vulatina, Dana Sahano Dana. Penena Sahano Penena, they will get a katakra. Me hammer the akma, a pikeno, a pit a labinous services killer. Service Kadulana will in labinous services gana katakra, the a pit a karna hatra kerte katakra. A karna hatra the monk munta kagalayana. Among the services that uh, mangroves produce or provide, one of the key things associated with mangroves is fishing. If you look at how much of uh, coastal fishery, how much the, the proportionate value of um, lagoon-based uh, fishery to the artisanal fishing, it's a high proportion in the country. Our fishermen tend to not just fish in the sea, but also equally in the shoreline area. So one of the biggest services done by mangroves to Sri Lankan communities is the supply of fish. And this fish are not just for direct consumption, but also for dry fish and also for ornamental fish trade. A large number of several species of ornamental fishes are caught from mangrove areas and they are exported to, the, uh, to different parts of the world, bringing us important revenue. 
fish is the thing that is known to us because fish is what commonly come. But when if you happen to be a person living near to estuary, there are many other food items. Now this photo, I, I took that uh, in Mana. You can see fishermen who tend to come and fish here also have collected these uh, uh, oysters and you can see the amount of oysters they have collected and eaten over the time. So this mound of oysters is a testimony to show you the amount types of food sources that are available along with the estuaries. Is that all? No. Every good mangrove patch is vital for another very important economic uh, industry. What is that industry? Shrimp farming. Shrimp farming was introduced in the supratidal zone of the country or the coastal zone of the country, thanks to the presence of mangroves, because mangroves are the natural barrier, the natural system to clean the waters so that our people, especially in the northwestern uh, coast, as well as in the eastern coast, get a healthy harvest and that their sh uh, shrimps are not affected by diseases. You know, in Sri Lanka, our shrimp farming is very much affected by diseases, especially white spot syndrome. And that's basically because of unhealthy practices associated to mangroves. Wonder how many of you have seen this? Uh, now, acid sulfate soil under natural conditions with the mangroves are well hidden so that they are not exposed. But the moment they are exposed, they tend to make uh, the soil as well as the water very acidic. And as a result, Activities like with, uh, activities like um, uh, rice paddy cu uh, cultivation cannot be done in those areas, right? But ma if mangrove patches are present in between these kind of uh, shrimp farms, these mangrove patches tend to take in that water, tend to take in that sediment, and through that process tend to clean the system. So that is why mangroves are important. Now I ask, what if they are not there? For how long do you think we can do aquaculture in Sri Lanka if there are no healthy mangrove patches to ensure that uh, if there are no mangrove patches, what will be the fate of uh, aquaculture in the country, coastal aquaculture? I question you. Is that all? No, here's a really good example of what happens when mangroves are removed. You can see the headland here. Then Request it. Mukada, a couple of in crying passe terungate, quaya carate the cardene, Venisaha, then Isilla Ginala votes Navatana, then Native Ginella. So now they have understood the importance of having mangroves in order to have a proper shoreline. So that's another service which we don't see. Every mango, mango tree, once it's there, these roots have the ability to remove the energy from waves and accordingly stop erosion. And that's a silent service that mangroves does. Is that all? No. Here's a picture I've taken in Batiklo area. You can see the, 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 the relationship between the ecosystems. What you see far away 
is the mangroves. The first barrier taken in the salt from the ocean, regulating it so that only a part of that salt gets into this marsh. And beyond this marsh, what do you see? Healthy paddy. This was taken last month on my way to uh, uh, celebrate Mangro, International Mangro Day. Why here in Sri Lanka are paddy farming in the eastern coast, paddy farming in the northern area goes straight into the coastline, thanks to mangroves. It is the salt barrier. It ensures that salt does not get into the land so that we can continue farming our staple food. I ask you again, I question you again, now what if mangroves are not there? These are the questions we need to ask. Recently, global attention was given to mangroves, not because of any of those things, because of one particular factor, that's carbon. Carbon, carbon credit trades are very much discussed. Globally, people, investors are checking where to invest most in order to get the best carbon credits. Recent studies have very clearly indicated when you look at carbon sequestration, mangroves tend to have a high burial rate of carbon. They tend to sequester carbon more than many other tropical rainforests. Salt marshes, mangroves, if you tend to have healthy salt marshes and mangroves in future, they are going to be tradable goods. And this is another important service that we always need to remember. Tradable good carbon credits. Lankavi, Kadulana, Kiani Apiti Diriatatiana, Eva Gita Matma Vadia, Apisaman in Katakaranoa, Tetkalapetina Vanant, Vesivanant, carbon Tirakarno, Namut Metan Hundertum Pena, Koya, Kare to the Kadulana Mudutrunasaha, Lavana Helkin, me Virulat Sambandi and Parasarapadi, Anit Hamekakatum Vadia. Carbon tirakarani kenika. Right. Is that the only reason why we need to uh, talk about mangroves and the services it renders? No. Many call mangroves, it's their home. Here is, uh, here is um, uh, Gangewadi again. You can see the largest mammal in the country, elephant, calls it a home. From time to time, they enter to mangroves. Why? Because salt-rich leaves, salt-rich sediments are important for their nutrition. So they tend to come there. Is that all? No. If you look at the flow for uh, the other animals associated with mangroves, it's so diverse. Um, in addition to the fish species that tend to stay there like Permanently, we do have lots of species that come and uh, settle here temporarily. Migratory species like birds, when they come to Sri Lanka, that is their very first resting point. And certain species like in here, you can see this uh, uh, butterfly. Those who are here who are interested about butterflies, you know. Uh, this is a uh, sort of rare uh, butterfly species, and they tend to be they tend to call mangroves their home. And that's exactly why these areas are important. Because of its aesthetic beauty, we also tend to call it our home. For some of us, it is a temporary home where we go to enjoy, have an overnight uh, camping experience, have a dip in the river, see the mangroves and come back. But half the time, we leave such areas with no respect at all. This is what you see on a typical uh, Monday in Gange Wadi, the, the, what is left by campers on, an, uh, um, on a weekend. I hope that those who listen to me, if you have been there, I really ask you to not to ever get involved with this kind of pollution in such pristine environment. Okay. Now you understand 
that despite being so important, we've not given the due value to mangroves. They are undervalued. And as, as a result, as we talk, talk about them as very smelly, muggy, uh, muddy and boggy areas, we don't tend to give the proper value. But I told you just now, the services mangroves render. And now, how do we put a value to them? Can we set a dollar value? It's quite difficult. Just because they are undervalued, we have also not protected them. We have not thought of mangroves as ecosystems that requires protection. You can see in this graph very clearly the percentage of protected mangroves and unprotected mangroves in different parts of the world. Indonesia, which seems to be, which is one of the most important crucial countries for mangroves, have very small fraction of it as protected. Compared to that here in Sri Lanka, I'm proud to say that all substantial mangrove patches are protected. Our biggest problem is continuing to protect them and ensuring that they are not degested. To understand the value of mangroves, we need to do actual evaluation studies because we are still studying the biology. Very few studies have looked into the value of mangroves. I've just shown you a recent um, uh, public, from a recent publication what I extracted to show how little are the value, valuation studies when it comes to mangrove ecosystems. Very few valuation studies are there. And even when the valuation studies are done, they tend to use certain evaluation methods that does not capture every essential aspect of mangroves. ප්‍රොඩක්ෂන් <laughs> ඉර බැහැගෙන යන එකත් බලලා කුරුල්ල එක්කුකේ දැන් කුරුල්ලන්ගේ සද්දෙටත් ඇහුම් කන් දීලා එලියට එද්දී මනසට දැනෙන සහනයට කොහොමද අපි වැලිව් එකක් දෙන්නේ නමුත් ඒකටත් වැලිව් එකක් දෙන්න ඕනේ මොකද ඒ තමයි ඒ පරිසරයේ ලැබෙන සේවාව ඒතර මේ අපි වැලිවේෂන් වලින් අපි පරිසර පද්ධතියකට ගණනක් මිම්මක් දෙන්න හදද්දි හැමතිස්සෙම මතක තියා ගන්න ඕනේ අපි දන්න දේවල් වලට විතරයි අපි යම්කිසි ඩොලර් රුපියල් වැලි වැලි එකක් දෙන්නේ නොදන්න දේවල් වලට දෙන්න හරිම අමාරුයි. කින්ද අපි හැමතිස්සෙම යම් පරිසර පද්ධතියක වටිනාකම මෙච්චරයි කියද්දි මතක තියා ගන්න ඕනේ ඒ අපි දන්නා මිල කළ හැකි දෙයට පමණයි මිල කරලා තියෙන්නේ. මිල කළ නොහැකි දෙයට මිල කරලා නැහැ. කඩලාන පරිසරයෙන් ලැබෙන ඔක්සිජන් ප්‍රමාණයට මිලක් දෙන්න පුළුවන්ද කොහොමද මිල කරන්නේ? මෙන්න මේ දේවල් තමයි අපි හිතන්න ඕනේ. ඒව දැනගත්තාම අපිට හිතන්න පුළුවන් ඇත්තටම කඩලාන අපිට අවශ්‍යයිද කියලා. දැන් මම මේ කතාවේ අවසානයට එන එද්දී මම මෙන්න මේ දේ පෙන්වන්න හිතුවා. මොකද මේ 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 දත්තයි මේ දත්ති තමත් මෙදවත් අලුත්ම පබ්ලිකේෂන් එකකින් මම මේ ගත්තේ. ඒ එතනදී කරලා තියෙන්නේ 2015 ඉදිරියේදී ලෝකයේ කඩලාන කොයි ආකාරයට වෙනස් වෙයිද කියන එක බලපු එක. එතකොට මම ඉස්සලා කතා කරා ඉන්ඩෝනේෂියා මැලේෂියා වගේ රටවල් ගැන දැනට වැඩියම කඩලාන තිබ්බත් අන්ප්‍රොටෙක්ටඩ් ස්ටේටස් එකේ තියෙන නිසා සහ අනිත් පැත්තෙන් ඒ රටවල් වල ඒ පරිසර පද්ධතියට තියෙන තර්ජන වල වැඩිකම නිසා ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් කරලා තියෙන විදිහට අපිට පේනවා මේ රටවල් වලින් නැති වෙන කඩලාන ප්‍රමාණය වැඩි කියලා ඒක තමයි අපිට මුළු සවුත් ඒෂියාවලම දකින්න කඩලාන වැඩි වෙන එක රටක්වත් මෙතන පෙන්වන්නේ නැහැ කඩලාන අඩු මදි අඩුවට යම් ඒක ලයික් අඩු යම් යම් ප්‍රමාණ වලින් අඩු වෙන තත්වයක් තමයි අපිට පෙන්වන්න තියෙන්නේ එතකොට මේ ආකාරයට ගියොත් මේ මේ අධ්‍යයනයේදී බලලා තිබ්බා කොයි ආකාරයක සේවාවන් අපිට ලැබෙනවද ඒ අනුව කොච්චර 
රුපියල් ගණනකින් මිල කරොත් කොච්චර මුදලකින් මේ සේවාවන් වල අඩු වීම සිදු වෙනවද කියලා. එතකොට අවසානයේ අපිට පේනවා මෙතන දාලා තියෙන මිලියන් වලින් US ඩොලර් මිලියන් වලින් 2158ක මිලියන් US ඩොලර් 2158ක සේවාවන් අඩු වීමක් පෙන්වලා තියෙනවා. මම ආයෙත් මතක් කරනවා මේ අපි කතා කරන්නේ අපි දැනට දන්න මැනුම් ගත කරලා තියෙන දේවල් විතර. මැනුම් ගත කරපුන කරලා නැති දේවල් තව ඕන තරම් තියෙනවා. So the end of the day the story is if you tend to give a value to mangroves then you understand that it is so economically important and that's how you have to look at mangroves today the economic importance if itself when you understand you can now you know then any country can really use mangroves for the economic benefit if i if someone ask me that i'm passionate about mangroves because of its biodiversity partly yes but partly because of its economic value partly because i know that i tend to live in a country that needs to ensure that we are economically stable so that we can be socially stable one such option lies with mangroves and we need to use it okay and looking at the global predictions story for southeast asia is gloomy we are expecting over 35% of the mangroves to be lost by 2015 due to sea level rise erosions and human expansion in southeast asia 35% of the mangrove cover to be lost yet even with that we should remain passionate to protect the mangroves of our country and that's where our survival is more than any other nation for us mangroves matter because we are an island nation mangroves are the first defense that we have in order to protect our shoreline and the configuration of our country so while the net situation is a loss globally although we see certain parts of the world that there are certain gains mainly because of restoration people now attempting to regrow mangroves we are still in a decline however we can change the tide we should change the tide we must give more attention and make sure that we are going from a net loss to a net gain and that is possible i'm very optimistic that is possible why should we do that because of economics if you really ignore the biodiversity and look at it in terms of monetary values i've just given you some statistics some statistics that will convince anyone why it is important to protect mangroves i'm not going to go into statistics and read them because they speak for themselves and then why not protect mangroves why do we want to talk about a tomorrow where mangroves are not there we need mangroves and then comes the question where to invest because the passion passion to restore mangroves is one thing passion to protect what is existing, existing is one thing fashion is another thing fashion of mangroves at the moment is to go on a weekend and to plant a cup that's not what we need now so i let me conclude by talking about where to invest we need to invest in places where mangrove patches are contiguous or rather extensive connected to each other that's where we need to invest and these investments are not easy what you see here is anvilundava what wildlife conservation department is trying to do at the moment with some of the abandoned shrimp farms you can see why how they are now trying to come up with some scientific restoration in order to bring back mangroves and all these attempts are money but by investing money you are also going to save billions for tomorrow so while it's good to go and plant few mangroves here and there don't forget our attempt should be number 1 
to protect what we have, especially the extensive uh, patches of mangroves. Second, to invest smartly to create connectivity. Tiny patches of mangroves by themselves are important, but connected mangroves patches are socially, biologically, and economically important for this country. Thank you very much for listening to me. Now it's time for the questions. Uh, there are three questions in the chat box. One is cactus is same family. Question by Mr. Mohammed Savir. Cactus is same family, madam. What's the question? Well, Mr. Samantha, I didn't get the question. Uh, Mr. Mohammed. Cactus is uh, of the same cactus, family. Cactus, it means the, is cactus the same family? Um, of the no. mangroves. No. The cactus are not mangroves. Um, uh, here in Sri Lanka, we have 21 ma true mangrove species. You tend to find cactus as associates sometimes, uh, especially when you go to uh, northern part as well as to, uh, 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 to this uh, Hambantota area. But cactuses are not mangroves. Then another question is important question raised by Mr. Nalinda Patirena. Madam, don't we have a national policy and or a conservation project to protect mangroves since it's equally or more important as much as other forests? Yeah. I'm very proud to say that we do have a mangrove national policy, mangrove policy for Sri Lanka. Actually, Sri Lanka is one of the first countries to come up with a mangrove policy exclusive for mangrove, mangroves in the world. So we do have a policy and I invite all of you to download it. It's in both, uh, in all three languages. It very clearly indicates what, what is expected and what should be the future directives. And I also take this as my opportunity to inform uh, everyone that is listening. At the moment, Ministry of Environment has also prepared mangrove action plan in line with the policy and they have identified in order to implement the policy what activities are required who should take the lead with that and how much all that activities are going to cost so we are moving forward systematically now with the policy in hand with the action plan um, almost completed, which will be released very soon after stakeholder validation. And it has identified ample opportunities for private sector, NGOs, schools, everyone to get involved with mangrove restoration and conservation. There's another question from Mr. Ravin Tarinder. Do we have a plan to trade carbon credit to foreigners? Well, I think before you, before we think about the trading carbon credits with foreign countries, I think what we really need to look at is how Sri Lanka itself is going to adhere with the Kyoto Protocols and nationally determined contributions uh, that we have committed to the global uh, uh, to the uh, to the other countries. So those of who or those of you who are familiar with. In this is national determined contributions. We've given lots of commitments, global commitments, um, to indicate what, how we are going to uh, manage our businesses in order to achieve certain targets. And one such thing is this: uh, we have indicated we are going to retain thirty percent of the forest cover in the country. We've committed for that. We have, we have also committed that we will declare more uh, coastal areas as coastal protected areas. We, uh, we have indicated about use of renewable energy, so on and so forth. And under these things, having carbon credits nationally is going to be quite important. I think trading them is a secondary matter. Before that, we will have to establish carbon credits within the country and then strategically think how we can use them. Maybe we are, we are yet to start that dialogue. What's the question? Uh, question is, 
are they considered as endangered species under CITES? Okay, um, CITES is about trade, trade of um, uh, species uh, between countries. But when we talk about uh, conservation status, we talk, tend to talk about that in terms of red listing, IUCN, national and the global red listing. When it comes to that, I was showing earlier um, uh, Scyphifora hydrophilacy uh, or uh, black mangrove, also known as Kalukadul. Now that is a species with a conservation status. It is listed as one species, as I remember it's in the endangered category. So it's actually endangered in the country. I'm not sure, I'm not very sure about any mangrove species inside this checklist. Maybe Samantha, you yourself can answer that question. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that question was raised by Ms. Laritavira Singh. Actually, uh, at the time, no more species, to my knowledge, or so. No more okay. scientists listed species. There's another question raised by Mr. Sam, uh, Dai Silvan. Are we having educational sessions for people living in areas around mangroves. It was so educational to me instead of we in Colombo knowing we will benefit if the people in coastal areas are educated. Your views, madam. Yes. Unfortunately, COVID came in between us and the good work that we were trying to do with the mangrove awareness. I need to tell you since 28, uh, 2018, no, actually since 2015, uh, Biodiversity Secretariat of the Ministry of Environment initiated one awareness session. What was this awareness session? Focusing on the 14 coastal districts of the country. We, we used to visit one particular district bringing in all the local stakeholders, discuss the same things that we've been talking now, and then talk about the problems then and there they have about the mangroves in the, their area. And then we used to have field visits in order to resolve most of these problems. In addition to that, there are lots of NGOs involved with uh, awareness, which is very, very important. And at the same time, uh, there was there had been several um, uh, school level involvement. I'm not saying it's sufficient. We need to reach more. We need to make them understand more. Uh, I think we need to be smart now because our physical contacts are becoming a challenge. Yet opportunities like this, whenever given, we need to take in order to talk to everyone. And also, I'm I urge everyone that listens here. Try and support anyone that you can to translate this material into singular Tamil because that helps a lot. It can be a simple infographic. I even ask LNC to think how you can come up with infographics with regards to mangroves. They are going to be very important. Thank you. It's a good idea. Thank you. Another question by Mr. Rajita. The photograph you mentioned that Kerala, I think that should be survey Raudala. Yes. Right. There's another question. Is there a mangrove board or district level authority that we can approach if we would like to see how to get involved locally in restoration or conservation efforts? This by Mrs. Sandrian Debris. I'm very glad that that question was asked. Actually, I was uh, looking forward for that question and uh, I really want to tell you uh, that uh, at the moment, certain interesting things are happening. What are they? Number one, we have identified for a long time. First thing, let me be very frank. Most of the mangrove restoration efforts in this country have been a failure. Number one. If you look at the amount of money we have invested and the number of plants we have raised, by now, our entire coastal area should be covered with mangroves. It has not happened because of several reasons. Number one, we've not planted in the right place. 
during the right time. And we have not assessed the suitability of an environment to plant. And in, during my uh, discussion, I showed some of the attempts by Forest Department, Wildlife Conservation Department uh, in restoring mangrove, uh, mangroves. At the moment, there are certain guidelines that are formed so that any, anyone that is interested can reach to Biodiversity Secretariat and they can then guide where, are, where the mangrove, uh, where the restoration sites are and how you can get involved for scientific restoration. Scientific restoration starts with the simple fact of deciding whether we need to plant something or not. Sometimes all you need to do is remove certain disturbances and enable the natural water flow, natural tide, because the plants would come and settle naturally. So assessing the baseline, assessing the current water, soil, and then deciding whether physical interventions are required or not, this scientific approach is now tested. And we have learned lots of things. By trial and error, we are now in a position to sort of like do a site assessment and then to decide what's the best option. So we welcome all of you because we really need to make sure that these are part of CSR projects. We have lots of agencies at the moment doing these things. As I'm speaking, uh, another, just like LNC, another um, non-governmental agency, Wildlife and Nature Protection Society has signed an MOU with the Wildlife Conservation Department for restoration in Anivilunda. We have some other agencies working with Forest Department. So anyone with a passion do come forward because collectively we can think of good restoration projects. Thank you. Thank you. There's another question, Mr. Janitar, in the same question, I think he got the answer about the conservation programs and how can they uh, awareness and how can they join? I think he got the answer. And there are many, many appreciations of the lecture and the informative. There are many, many appreciations. Thank you very much. Prasna Singhaleng Hanna Puluang, Vodhi Diripat Karan Puluang, Liela Hari, Hatakar Lahari, Tava Prasna Dekakata Velava Deno. Uh, singling Hari uh, Hanna Pulo. Uh, 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 okay. uh, time uh, allows. Please. Yeah. Please. Uh, uh, Dr. Sevandi, thank you very much for your very detailed and very informative uh, lecture. I am uh, Udelian here, Secretary to LNC. Uh, I have just a clarification uh, regarding the pie chart what you showed uh, that uh, yes. that percentages uh, you showed in the against the countries are in the percentage uh, comparative to the world uh, uh, growth or, or it is individually the countries against the coastline say 6% from the, if you show 6% that is 6% uh, from the coastal area of the particular country or from the world uh, world uh, growth uh, or something it's from the world growth well because growth. it's so, it's in relation to the coastline yeah then uh, my uh, the other uh, the clarification on the base on that uh, if sri lanka if you take we have a very comparatively very uh, Low low cost line uh, compared with Australia. Or, uh, exactly. So our yeah our then our percentage may be very high if you divide it by. As... The the problem we the problem there is where the extent is uh, measured uh, uh, along the coastline. Also, uh, uh, we check into how to what extent it comes to the uh, inland. In Sri Lanka, our problem is our tidal fluctuation is not a uh, really uh, like our tidal fluctuation is not very high. As a result, our mangroves not do not tend to go uh, move further inland. Very much so, like maximum what one or two kilometers in certain cases, less than that. As a result, our total mangrove extent is lower compared yeah. to other countries. That's where that's why, Mr. Uday, like Sundar, when you look at Maldives, yeah, 
the uh, though, though the coastline is low, uh, sort of like uh, not very extensive, Sundarban itself, as the mangroves go further inland, yeah. their percentage is high. Uh, because I thought that Indonesia, a lot of islands, so their coastal area is yeah. high. Yeah, and uh, our country, the coastal area is not that much. So that's uh, I I was confused. So okay, thank you very much thank for that. Yeah. Any more thank questions? Prasna thava ti ino wadi dri pakkaran na. Mahitani bak kaladai ka rikha ka actually it's a very special one because she's the most suitable person to talk on this subject because she's a national coordinator for the mangrove and also regional. She's the coordinator for the regional blue carbon. Uh, common with blue charter and also presently she is the uh, she coordinator for the esa presently very timely uh, research uh, project conducting by the ministry of environment like but there are many many activities she is involved so uh, therefore and also finally i have to tell that uh, uh, at the beginning we uh, i'm very sorry uh, there was a technical error due to the power failure uh, we could mention that uh, she is involved in a lot of things, but this is not the time because now we are in a hurry to leave. Uh, uh, and also, she is a member of our LNC uh, also. But uh, in future, all these uh, suggestions brought by the questions and everything will submit to the, through Professor Sevwandi, we are going to submit to the Ministry of Environment. Uh, thank you very much.